Good evening and thanks for being with us. I'm Brian Yukono and I'm Amanda Hill. You have seen the advertisements for and against Pine Tree Power, the nonprofit looking to take over Maine's power utilities, CMP and Versant. You will have the opportunity to vote on this issue in November. New today, we are taking a closer look at that seven page fact sheet from the Office of Maine's Public Advocate. Here's News Center Maine's Jack Moment. A report aimed to split two competing interests down the middle, issued by the Office of the Public Advocate, set to give voters a better understanding of question three, that if approved by voters, would replace CMP and Versant with a publicly owned utility. Our job is to represent the consumer, the ratepayers, and make sure that they are getting fair prices and good service. Bill Harwood is Maine's public advocate, saying his office wrote the report due to the increased political spending on the campaigns and misleading claims made to persuade people's votes. We are in uncharted water. Harwood says that while both political groups pointed to other examples of publicly owned power to fit their agenda, there is no true example to base Maine's proposal on. In the report, we see hard questions answered. But if the OPA didn't know, we quickly said, you know, this is uncertain. Like how both CMP, Versant and Pine Tree Power argue that their method of utility power is the right one for facing climate change. The report says it's impossible to tell that which one is the greener choice. Another part of the report tells the voters that if Pine Tree Power is approved in November, the rates for customers will go up for the next couple years, followed by significant savings for decades following meaning Pine Tree Power could save customers money for future generations. But on the other hand, the office of the OPA says the number of unknowns that comes with voting yes on Pine Tree Power should be of concern for the voter. Are you more comfortable with a, a board of directors that's elected at the ballot box or that it's elected at the shareholder meeting? And there are pros and cons. Both sides to the issue say they found things in the report that they agree with. What I took from that report is there's just a lot of uncertainty and we don't really know uh, how any of the promises that Pine Tree Power make, made would come true. Willie Rich is with Maine Affordable Energy, a political group funded by the parent companies of CMP. He told us he does not agree with the data that says customers would save in the long term. That's a long ways off in the future to, to take such a big gamble. You know, we did see areas of agreement where uh, even the public advocate who had worked for the utilities does see those savings. Lucy Hawk Schertner with Pine Tree Power says she wishes the OPA issued a stronger opinion that was in their favor and disagreed that there is no clear climate friendly choice. We have the option to have a utility that is owned by Mainers, so that it's working for Mainers, that has mandates to be protecting our climate. But Harwood says it will ultimately be up to the voter and his job was to provide the state's interpretation of the consequences that come with this unprecedented vote. And that was Jack Moment reporting this evening. We will have the OPA's full report available for you to review in the New Center Maine app.